Hello, I'm James and I like to colourise old photographs. And today, I'm going to be colouring this double photograph of a mother and her baby from approximately 1903. As you can see, the original glass negative was extensively damaged in the past, so before I can start colouring it, I have to repair the image as much as possible. I'll now take you through my thoughts on both the restoration and colourisation as you watch my time-lapse recordings of both processes. So I've wanted to work with this picture for a long time, for two main reasons. For one thing, the technical challenge presented in restoring this picture really fascinated me. I knew that restoring the image would be difficult work, but that the final restored result, when compared to the damaged image, could be really interesting to look at. Although there are sadly lots of badly damaged photographs in the world, and damage alone was not the primary reason that I wanted to work with this picture. The major reason I wanted to work with this photograph was far more emotionally driven. It made me really sad to see this particular photograph in this state. Harry Stephen Keeler wrote a short story in 1939 called Strange Romance. In this story, a young man named William inherits a high-powered telescope from his father. William visits his father's old house and discovers his dad has trained the telescope on a distant planet one that is amazingly not only able to support life, but supports humanoid life very much like ourselves. William looks through the telescope and finds his father has focused it onto an alien garden. To William's shock, a beautiful young alien woman walks briefly out into the garden and William falls instantly in love with her. Unfortunately for William, the image of the garden drifts out of the telescope's view, as the two planets continue to orbit separately to each other. Upon accepting that even the slightest attempt to try and readjust the telescope will likely lose him the garden forever, William returns every night to look through the telescope again at the same time when the planets are aligned. He does this just in the brief chance that during those few minutes when the garden is visible, the young alien woman might walk out into his vision again. Unfortunately, after multiple nights of staring through the telescope, William comes to the horrible realisation that it would take roughly 100 years for the light from her planet to travel to Earth. So while William can view the young woman walking around every night, those scenes only exist as an echo from a previous time. He is upset to realise that the young, beautiful woman he is enamoured with is now either extremely old or has long since passed away. Now, somewhat ignoring that William is most definitely a creepy peeping Tom, and an ageist one at that, I feel some degree of personal connection with how William viewed the distant alien planet whenever I look at old photographs. Where it took the light from the alien planet 100 years to reach William, it has taken the light used to capture these old photographs potentially 100 years or more to reach our modern eyes. And much like the brief few minutes that William could view the garden, a photograph will capture maybe 1 30th of a second of the past, to which we can usually see neither the events before or after that incredibly brief exposure of film. Now, while I haven't fallen in love with this young mother, I do feel a human connection with her. These two brief moments of her holding her baby for a portrait paint a beautiful picture of this event, I feel. Firstly, even in the incredibly damaged state of the original photograph, we can see how clearly exhausted this mother is. As much as it's incredibly rude to point this out, the bags under her eyes in the left picture very much suggest she's not been sleeping lately. The look of exhaustion from the mother is perfectly counterbalanced by the look of energetic excitement from the baby being carefully held firmly in place for its portrait. That being said, I feel absolutely nothing but affection between the two in these pictures the likely frustrations of this photographic session not being significant enough to be captured. Now earlier, I said that this picture made me feel sad, despite the scene itself obviously being very much a happy one. What made me so sad about this photograph was that while I feel it was only originally taken to capture an image of this child, I think the photographer managed to capture something far more important. I feel that in these brief moments, this photographer managed to capture a mother's love. I don't personally feel the really important moments in life are ever the ones you're purposefully trying to capture. I feel it's the fleeting moments, 
such as this one, which have far more worth than the grand gestures or events we desperately try to preserve. It's sad enough to think that this strong parental bond would inevitably weaken in time, and that this innocent child, being protected from falling off a small table, would likely have to live through both the Great Depression and two world wars, with their own children possibly having to serve in the second of those. All of that was inevitable with the passing of time, however. What really upsets me was the thought that something so rare to successfully capture, such as a parent's love for their child, could be destroyed in this way. The thought that one more scratch along the back of the glass negative's emulsion could have erased this baby's face in history horrifies me. I always view colorization as a means to transport an audience back in time to the moment captured in the photograph. Therefore, with my feeling that the moment in this photograph was so important, it became vital for me to try and restore it to its original glory. With either the mother or child being alternately in need of repair on each side, I figured that the most straightforward option would be to use the less damaged right hand side picture for the base of a restored photograph, and to use only surviving elements from the more damaged side to repair it with. However, the more I thought about the images, the more I realised that the real charm of this picture was the double photograph itself. Seeing how the mother has had to adjust her hold of the child in the two pictures is what sells the difficulties inherent with taking a picture of a baby. I also really like that she's posing for the photograph in the first picture, but she has had to return her full attention to the child before the second photograph was taken. With the decision having been made that I would do everything within my power to restore both sides of the image, the difficult restoration process could begin. When starting a restoration such as this, I find it generally useful to try and clean up as much of the major damage as quickly as possible, more for morale purposes than anything else. While the broad coverage areas of restoration could comparatively easily be restored at any point, staring at an image with large untouched sections of damage will begin to psychologically mess with you after a while I find. The less apparent overall damage there is to repair, the more manageable the image restoration seems, even if all the damage that is left to restore is really complicated to fix. A heavily damaged picture, such as this, is a bit like a jigsaw puzzle with a load of missing pieces, where you have to guess from the edges of the still existing pieces what details were originally in between them. So for example, I could see that the baby must have one arm outstretched based on what is remaining of their sleeve in the damaged area on the right photograph. I always find it easier to identify what's wrong with an image and then adjust that mistake, so I tend to work in a fairly painterly way. I will fill in a damaged area quite quickly with the full intention of reworking over that same area and gradually bringing it into the correct shape, bit by bit. Occasionally, I would switch on only the original damage layer to check if my repairs still fitted with the jigsaw-like pieces of damage I was working from. You can sometimes find yourself restoring an area with a perfectly visually fine repair, only to find that it's completely different to what would have originally been in the picture. Along with the damaged arm, another area existed in the photograph where I had barely any useful reference for it on either side. The mother's mouth on the left hand picture is nearly completely gone, and her existing mouth in the right hand picture was at a completely different angle, making a cloning repair very complicated. I was tempted initially to just find an undamaged and unrelated third image to use to reconstruct these two heavily damaged points. Although, when restoring a photograph, I generally like to only use elements from that same photograph to preserve some feeling of authenticity. This is always a difficult decision, as it comes with a trade-off in terms of end result quality. Had I decided to use, for example, another woman's mouth for the picture on the left, the end result would have likely looked slightly more polished. Although, by choosing to use the mother's existing mouth from another angle and reshape it, even if her mouth looks strange, it would be her mouth which looks strange, and not someone else's. So in the end, 
I used reference images as reference only, and then recreated those references using only elements from the damaged picture. As you'll see in this video, I had to try multiple iterations of the mother's smile in particular. Reconstructing a smile is probably the hardest bit of Photoshop work I've ever had to do. While I feel that the end results for both missing elements still look a little weird, I feel that when compared to some of my earlier versions, they look incredible. I had considered cutting out some of the many times I messed up and started again with my repairs in this video, but I felt it's important to show the entire working process as much as possible. Given that I originally intended to restore only half of this picture, I feel really happy that I decided to make the leap to restore the entire image. I do feel, however, that there are a few areas where I didn't feel confident in my ability to successfully restore in an accurate way, so I decided not to do so. For example, the position of the baby's non-damaged ear on the right-hand photograph suggests that in the right-hand photo, the baby was possibly giggling. I made the decision that given my difficulty in repairing the mother's mouth successfully, it would probably be better to do a repair which was less drastically different from the left face. I did, however, lightly reshape the baby's mouth to subtly make the expression slightly more amused, to replicate, even only in part, what I suspect was originally happening during the photographic session. The colouring process was relatively straightforward, at least when compared to the restoration. One of my biggest concerns was trying to make sure that the mother's coat was authentically coloured. Edwardian outfits can potentially be quite colourful, and I wanted to make sure that the colours I used were appropriate to the time. A colour photographic image is compiled of three elements. These are brightness, saturation and colour hue. While a black and white picture lacks both the saturation and the colour hue information, it does have the brightness to work from when colourising. For that reason, while it's often impossible to be sure of the exact colours that were originally in a scene, you can be fairly sure of how bright those colours were. For this reason, I realised quite quickly that the mother's coat was quite dark in colour, and trying to add heavily saturated colours very soon looked unnatural. I decided to go with a very dark reddish purple in colour, as it would complement the dark green of the blanket while still being authentic to the era. While historical accuracy when choosing colours is always my top priority, if I can't be sure of the exact colours originally used for an object, I try and make sure that the period appropriate colours I use complement others in the photograph. One issue that did come up during the colouring process was how some damage, which I had thought repaired, looked far worse and more noticeably restored in colour. Black and white images can somewhat obscure damage in a way that colour will really highlight. I had assumed this would be the case, but I was surprised by just how much in this picture needed to still be retouched during the colouring process. One interesting personal realisation I had once I'd finished this colourisation was just how normal and everyday this photographic scene felt once restored and coloured. In a weird way, the damage of the original photograph complemented the emotional undertones of the image, I think. Here, we had a young mother holding onto her child to protect it, while time itself was arriving to separate them. It's odd to think that in restoring something, you can maybe lose something else in return. Although, that being said, now that I look at the restored image, I don't feel sad anymore. Once these pictures were taken in the studio, this mother and baby left the photographers to await the developed pictures and the rest of their lives. That life outside the frame was something that was really hard for me to imagine when I first looked in horror at the damaged photograph. At the end of the strange romance short story, when William learns of the hundred year planetary time difference, he hits the telescope in frustration. In the process, he loses the position of the miraculous alien planet forever. Despite working with this picture being a really involved and often stressful process, I'm really glad I chose to work with it. I feel I've managed to bring this picture back to life, 
and I've saved it from the brink of being entirely forgotten about. Despite my restoration work not being perfect, I have managed to somewhat successfully reunite a mother with both her child and her lost smile, and that's something I'm really happy about. Thank you very much for watching. If you're a new viewer, I have other colourisations up on this channel, and more planned for the future if you'd like to subscribe. Please let me know in the comments what you think of this restoration, and also if there's a person or topic you'd like to see me add some colour to. Thank you again.